um, one moment, I need to change the stream title, but Twitch app sucks. One moment. <laughs> Should be good to go. So I opened up the game and Paimon started talking to me. Like, I, I didn't realize that the event had started, but apparently it has. <laughs> so, why don't we check it out? Paimon wants to head to one Min restaurant. I do not have a problem with that. There's Xiang Ling. Hey, guess who's here? Sorry to bother you. <laughs> oh, no way! It's the Traveler and Paimon! Hi, ah, Xiang Traveler, Ling. Welcome. Good to see you. What can I get for you? We want some black back perch stew. All right. Black back perch stew it is. Make yourselves at home. It'll be right out for you in just a moment. I was just thinking about you guys, and now you're here. It feels like you heard my call and came running. <laughs> you mean you were about to come looking for us? Uh-huh. There's something I want to discuss with you guys. Did you happen to see how the city looked on the way over here? Everyone's getting ready for the Moon Chase Festival. Oh, I hadn't noticed anything different. <laughs> oh, so that's what it's called. Moon Chase Festival? Is that another one of Liyue's ancient traditions? And that's right! Moon Chase is a big festival where we celebrate the arrival of the fall by moonlight! The old folks say that thousands of years ago, this was the time of the year when the Adepti would seek the way. But it's completely different nowadays. We eat our favorite foods, spend time with friends and relatives, enjoy the moon and the flowers... so much easier! Basically, we just do all the things that people like doing and don't take a whole lot of effort! Nice. Sounds like Paimon's kind of <laughs> festival. Yeah. <laughs> With your great taste in food, Moon Chase Festival is sure to be to your liking. Paimon has taste. Hey, she likes everything. If you have a problem with Paimon's taste, just spit it out. You like everything. Um. So are you guys free these days? I'm taking part in this year's masterful chefs. If possible, I'd like you to be my culinary consultants. My cat is looking at me. She looks like she's glaring at me. I don't know why. What's the matter? That's right. Getting some suggestions from friends will broaden your horizons. Masterful chefs, huh? So is that like a competition? All <laughs> right, yeah. I guess you probably haven't heard about it before. Every year, Moon Chase Festival has a different theme, usually picked by the Qixing. This year's theme is Feast of the Bounteous Land, so the Qixing decided to organize a cooking competition. Oh, interesting. Feast of the Bounteous Land. Hmm, pretty much sums up what Leo is all about. Great theme. Yeah. I totally agree. I heard it was Ningguang that came up with it. She's so amazing and so full of mystery. Yep. So what do you need us to do? Well, I want to take part in the competition. Coming up with new dishes is hard work. By the time you finally thought of something, cooked it, taste tested it, it can be hard to judge whether you're really into something or not. 
<laughs> so, I was thinking, I could get the two of you to help by gathering everyone's thoughts on what makes a great dish. I really want to think outside the box this time. And to do that, I'm going to need lots of different ideas from lots of different people. This'll be a piece of cake! We've got friends from all over the map, haven't we? Can't help being popular. <laughs> <laughs> you sound pretty confident. Well, you know, not to brag or anything. But first things first, let's have a delicious one meal. After that, we can go around to all of our friends in Leela and get their ideas one by one. Okay, great. Also, Boba should be back soon, so we can all go together. Here's your black back perch stew, folks. Mmm, it smells so good. Thanks, Chef Mao. <laughs> it's my pleasure. After having a delicious meal. Mmm, that was so delicious. Theory confirmed, this is definitely chili pepper weather. Shang Li can be a bit of a handful, so please look out for her while you're out and about. Come on, Dad, why would you say that? Because I know you all too well, my dear, that's why. You mustn't be quite so reckless when you're out in the wild, you understand? You do well to be a little more cautious, like our traveler friend. I don't know if I'd describe my playstyle as cautious. Eh, I mean an archer, don't so worry. I guess so. We're all friends here. Let's all look out for each other. Oh, and Gloma's back, roly pulling around as usual. All right, let's pack up and head out. some friends to chat with in the city. Does it look any different than usual? I sort of can't tell. Seen you in a while. So it's outside the box thinking that we're looking for, right? Hotel always seems to have a unique perspective, so let's make this our first stop. That she does. That she what? does. My ears are burning. Did somebody say my name? Hi, Hutao. Uh, yeah, it's Paimon and the Traveler. Oh, and Xiangling, too. Come to hang out. Oh, of course, Hutao. Way, way outside the box. Meaning you're here for some other reason, right? How might I be of assistance? Uh, well, Hutao, I wanted to ask you, what kind of food do you like? What food I like? Hmm, off the top of my head, I don't really have an answer. Wow, so even Hutel gets lost for words sometimes. Paimon sure didn't see that coming. <laughs> Come on, even the chirpiest birds clock out for the night, right? I'm no different. Uh, pretty sure clocking out isn't something birds do, but okay. <laughs> it's a metaphor, Paimon. <laughs> it's all right, Hutel, just keep it simple. All right. There's no need to overcomplicate it. Just pick a dish and tell me what you like about it. I'm doing some market research. I see, I see. Launching a new dish? Well, let me say right off the bat, nothing weird, okay? Some poached fish, a side of shrimp dumplings, that is all you need. Mm, poached fish and shrimp dumplings? That's a bit ordinary, isn't it? Well, it is and it isn't. Think about it. Poached fish is hot and spicy with a powerful aroma. It's a dynamic dish. Add a side of shrimp dumplings, <laughs> and there's your static component. <laughs> Got it? Dynamic? Hmm. Oh, I can do dynamic. Mushroom slime stew. It. No, 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 not that kind of dynamic. <laughs> a dish is more than substance. It's a mood. Poached fish is red and spicy. It elicits a response from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. That's why I call it dynamic. 
Shrimp dumplings are more subdued, clear and smooth with a pure and subtle fragrance. I call that static. Combining dynamic and static is how you create a perfectly balanced meal. A union between opposite but complementary features coexisting in perfect harmony. Yeah, that seems in line with Hu Tao's general philosophy. Uh, Balance. I didn't follow that at all. But at the same time, it kind of sounded smart, so... Okay. Dynamic and static. Opposite, but complementary. Um, so is this just another way of saying you should keep everything balanced? You know, a little meat, a little veggie, a little salt, a little sugar? Bingo! Except I don't think you need to have a sweet dish for it to be a complete meal. Personally, I always skip dessert. Okay, I think I got it. At first I thought you were just goofing around, but actually you make a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> How did I ever doubt you, Hu Tao? Thanks. When it comes to telling tales, the storytellers have got nothing on Hu Tao. Hmm? Sounds suspiciously like a compliment to me. I'll take it. You're clearly a keen philosopher. Uh-huh. Well, at least one of you gets it. Everything in this world runs on its own set of principles, be it the circle of life or sugar and spice. You either get it or you don't. Since the traveler seems to approve, I'll make sure to factor it in. Hmm. I don't think we're pretty much done here now. Let's head to Boo Boo Pharmacy next. <gasps> Boo Boo Pharmacy? Yeah, you'll definitely get some interesting responses over there. <laughs> Who tell you're not coming with us? <laughs> Chi Chi doesn't have working taste buds, so she's probably not going to be very helpful here. Unless she makes a comment about, like, the texture of the food or the presentation. But, you know, who can give us some advice? I joke. so badly. Let's give that a sec. There he is! Hi. Nice to see you again. Hey, Chi Chi. Oh, it's you. Is everything okay? Why, if it isn't the special guests who seldom visit. Less busy than usual, I see. Yikes! Well, what happened to Baiju's voice? <laughs> Excuse me? The neck. Oh, it's just Changsheng. Is it just me, or is Baiju, like, a lot paler than you? Like, not just his skin, his whole model looks washed out. What is going on there? Huh. Anyways, it's been a while. I haven't seen you since, uh... Welcome, welcome. Here to procure an herbal remedy, I presume? The fucking teapot quest. Oh no, we actually came for the conversation this time. We're here to talk food. I'm entering this year's cooking competition, so I wanted to ask you both... Oh, wait, there's three of you. <laughs> I wanted to ask the three of you what kind of food you like. <laughs> Most astutely self-corrected. 
He shall surely supply our assistance. You'd need to know what food I like? Hmm. It's all the same. No flavor. Chi Chi has some gustatory dysfunction and can't taste any food. Make no mistake, she's not being uncooperative. Oh, I understand. That's fine. Still, I'd expect Chi Chi to have some sort of dietary preferences, though. There must be some dishes that you like the sensation of. Sensation? Hmm. Yes. There's one. Coconut milk. Nice and cold. Well, that doesn't help us. It's not a dish, it's a drink. How about you two? Any thoughts? I like bite-sized morsels of meat. I agree with Chung Chung. <laughs> Many of our patients are the elderly and young children. They find large chunks of fowl or seafood difficult to swallow and digest. Dishes where the ingredients have been finely chopped, on the other hand, are far more suitable for them. We also see plenty of people with colds and sore throats who find it difficult to eat rich food. From a purely pharmaceutical perspective, I tend to recommend soups and stews. Got it! Uh, would that be medicinal soups and stews? Ugh, medicinal soup. I don't like it. <laughs> mm, I must apologize for having such a one-track mind. It's a little difficult to think about food without worrying about the health implications these days. We've had quite the endless stream of patients recently. If you ask me, I think the changing weather is to blame. Yeah, probably. That's okay. Everyone's input counts. Keeping it seasonal and suitable for all ages sounds like a pretty good idea to Paimon. Important considerations for any chef. Medicinal dishes have higher demands in terms of nutritional balance than the kind of food I normally cook. I don't usually focus on medicinal properties, but since this is for a competition, maybe I can score more points by taking both flavor and function into account. Also true. Only with substance. Always better. Everyone will like it. It's a great suggestion. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. As long as we could help. It's great to have a doctor's unique perspective. I'm feeling inspired. I'm so obsessed with Gulba just hopping around in the background. Oh, how you flatter me. Receptivity to sensible suggestions make for a savvy chef. Oh, she is. Creating new dishes is Xiangling's favorite thing to do. You can be sure she'll put lots of care and attention into it. <laughs> Everyone's got their hobbies, and mine is cooking. Usually I just go with my own ideas, but having a whole new perspective this time is sure to make a big difference to the end result. Great! That makes this whole trip worth it! Alright, time to move on to the next. So we've got an independent thinker's perspective, and a health perspective. Hmm. Next, Paimon thinks we should probably talk to some picky eaters. Who do we know in Liyue that's a picky eater? Um, Xing Cho hates carrots. Xiao pretty much only eats almond tofu. <laughs> Oh yeah, Ganyu's vegan. I'll race you there. I don't know if that necessarily counts as being picky, but it is a restricted diet. Bet you can't keep up with me. So I assume we'll be talking to Ganyu. Traveler in Paimon, and Shangling. Uh, greetings, friends. It's been a while. Hey, what brings you here? Huh. Everyone's gathered together here. 
Interesting. Has something happened? What's with this great big stone on the ground? Long story. So, just to confirm, I will assume responsibility for handling this stone of unknown origin. Any objections? <laughs> None here. You know how to get things done, Kitching. As long as it's with you, I can rest easy knowing that it's in safe hands. Hmm. Should I take this to mean that you doubt the relative safety of leaving this in the hands of the Tianchuan? No. Huh? Well, for starters, Ketching is the one who's always out running errands, rain or shine. Besides, you don't seem to give a wooden more about this whole thing anyway, so what's it to you? I was merely joking. You, meanwhile, seem only too ready to pounce when an opportunity to publicly lambaste me arises. Even when it means giving our poor mutual friend here the cold shoulder. Is, is this a bad time? By no means. You wish to know about the stone, I presume. Then let me invite the great seafarer, Captain Beto, to tell the story. If she would be so kind. You... <sighs> Fine. <laughs> well, uh, it's a big one, right? And such a smooth surface, too. Makes you think there's got to be a good chunk of jade in there. It was found by a fishing crew not far off the coast. It must have been underwater for years. So the erosion will be what's given it that smooth finish. Finds like this cannot be kept as private property and must be submitted to a holder of public office. Placing it into our custody will also give them peace of mind. So, what's inside it? Well, we've hit it with just about every weapon we could get our hands on and haven't managed to even dent it yet. Clearly there's more to it than meets the eye. No weapon could smash it open. Wow. Hyman doesn't think we've ever encountered a stone like that before. Kuching has taken an unusually keen interest in this giant stone. Which is why we are leaving the matter in her capable hands. Let's put that aside for a second. Traveler, what brings you here? Were you looking for someone? Actually, we were looking for all of you! We need all hands on deck here! Yeah, might as well get their opinions while we're here. Oh? Hopefully not because there's been some sort of cataclysmic event. Nothing no, of no, the sort. nothing like that. Paimon's just getting carried away. I just wanted to ask everyone about their food preferences. Food preferences? That's a little unexpected. I have rather simple tastes. Precise, pure, smart, and sophisticated. That is all I require. That doesn't sound simple, Ningguang. That's your idea of simple, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Beto! <laughs> I summed up my culinary requirements in four words. Is that insufficiently simple for you? A few weeks out on the open ocean would fix your flawed definition of simplicity, let me tell you that. <laughs> what about you, Beto? Me? Uh, if it's freshly cooked and piping hot, that floats my boat. It's got a little chili pepper in there, too. I'm one very happy captain. I meant that you would have said bar food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bar food works, too. As for me... It's got to be seafood. Okay, got it. So, seafood, piping hot, and, uh, a simple but sophisticated. Not a lot of overlap, but if we combine it with the ideas we got from everyone else so far, I can sort of see where this is going, vaguely. And that's where I would disagree. Traveler, surely you've heard of golden shrimp balls. Oh, true. <sighs> oh my. They're my favorite. <laughs> you need to wash and devein the shrimp, wrap it in finely sliced potato strips, and deep fry it to perfection. There's no room for cutting corners. They're very precisely put together. They taste pure. The presentation is smart, and the skill needed to cook them is highly sophisticated. It fits Ningguang's forward summary to the letter. Huh. So what you're saying is. For all the frills and trills, good food is all the same at the core? I heartily agree. Golden shrimp balls are a prime example. Their essence lies in combining art and nutrition in a single package. It is a dish of true value. Okay, got it. So Kuching loves golden shrimp balls. Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> Did I? 
No, but it was obvious. <laughs> no, at least not outright. Alrighty! Thanks for all your input. I'll be sure to take it all into consideration. Traveler, Paimon, do you have anything planned after this? Uh, no immediate plans. Good. I'd like you to help me investigate something. It's about this stone. Right. You picked the right people for the job. We investigate stuff all the time. My thoughts exactly. The Chising has a public duty to deliver our final verdict to the fishermen. But there are also some things I would like to investigate on a personal level. I'm sure you've become acquainted with the general background of the Moonchase Festival. However, I have my own understanding of this festival's roots. My grandfather was a researcher of Liyue's traditions. In his notes, he indicated that there was a deity called the Stove God in ancient Liyue, which people paid tribute to at a certain time of the year. Isn't that just Rex Lapis? That's just another title for him, right? Very few written records make mention of the Stove God, and those that do are notoriously confusing. Yeah. Some scholars believe that the Stove God was just another title held by the Lord of Geo, but others suggest that this was a different deity altogether. One folktale even claims that the ancients found the Stove God's shrine, but there was no statue, only a huge, smooth slab of stone. Shortly after it was found, the stone was lost in transit, and it hasn't been seen since. This stone here has all the same features, so I suspect it could be the one that went missing all those years ago. After many years of researching ancient texts, my grandfather came to believe that the practice of paying seasonal tribute to the Stove God may be best described as a festival. He called it the Stove God Festival. That would make it the forerunner to the Moonchase Festival we know today. But this is all just theory and conjecture. To prove any of it, we'd need to start by identifying who the Stove God really was. Now that Rex Lapis has passed on, and Liwa has entered the age of humankind, his successor should continue to respect our nation's culture and traditions, just as he did. That's why I think the responsibility for this situation should fall to me. It's a chance to shed light on our history, revitalize an ancient tradition, and possibly prove my grandfather's hypothesis along the way. With any luck, we'll nail all three in one fell swoop. It was just a couple of days ago that we received this stone. Right after, we decided to use food as the central theme for this year's festival. It makes me wonder. Maybe a divine will is at work behind all of this. Zhongli, was this your doing? <laughs> Three birds with one stone, huh? That's pretty efficient, even for cooking. I'd love to help, but... I'm in the middle of a commission for Chenling. Hey, don't worry about that. This sounds super important, so don't mind me. Besides, we're only... <clears throat> Wait a second. I got it! But what? Why are you shouting? Kaching, can I tag along for your investigation? Uh-huh. Uh, but... Since it's all about the stove god, I might get to learn something useful about cooking along the way. It'll be great inspiration for me in the competition. <laughs> Please, let me come along. I promise I'll help. If it means that much to you... Okay, I suppose you can come. Really? Yay! Thank you so much! You're the best! <clears throat> now that that's settled, time to get going. Chingsa Village is said to be home to a lot of historical texts, so I'd like to start by making some inquiries there. Alright, then it's off to Chingsa we go! Alright, to Chingsa Village. Granny. Hi, Granny. We need your help with something. Are there any old books around Chingso Village? You know, from a really long time ago? 
very specific, Paimon. Oh, looking for ancient texts, are we? Hmm, let me think. There is an old warehouse over there, property of the Feyun Commerce Guild. Many books are stored inside. Those that they have no room for at home. In fact, their youngest comes over this way to read sometimes. <laughs> are we gonna run into him there? The Feyun Commerce Guild's youngest? You must be talking about Xingxiao. Paimon didn't know they had a warehouse here. Let's go take a look. What do you mean you didn't know, Paimon? We go over there, like, a few times a week. So there's artifacts there. Oh no, wait, that's not what it is. Is it the place that I'm thinking of? I can't even tell. Oh. It's not the place I'm thinking of, but it is somewhere where there's artifacts. Nearby. Did I not pick up the other one? I did not. from that direction. Come on. Uh, not so hard. Absorption test. You're open, Jack. Well, mark two. My hammer. Hello. Y'all good, dude? <sighs> I've come here to clean the book warehouse plenty of times before. But this is the first time I've run into these crooks. Are you all right? I am, thanks to all of you. Hey, wait a minute. You're the traveler, aren't you? And you're with... Lady Kuchin, an honor, truly an honor. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. I understand that this book warehouse is the property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Could you advise whether we might find any text relating to the stove god in this collection? Um, Why is my cat stove yelling at god? me? Uh, I, I heard that's the Lord of Geo, right? Huh? Really? Yeah. A friend of mine who conducts research mentioned it once before. We use stoves for cooking, and stoves are built from rock. Some people think that the stove is a gift from the Lord of Geo. And that's why they call him the Stove God. Seems logical enough. But do you have any books on the topic? Um, I, uh... I I'm sorry, I'd have to ask the young master about that. Oh, any questions? Yeah. Please, ask away. Hi, Xing Cho. Hey, it's Chung Yun and Oh, Chung Yun is with them! Hello, one and all. I know who Chung Yun is. Hey guys, you don't what are you doing me. here? <laughs> I was bored with nothing to do, and thought I'd come out this way for a bit of reading. And then I thought, why not bring Chung Yun along too? <laughs> yes. I'm just along for the ride, really. I see the Yuhang Kuching is with you. Hmm. Whatever brings you here must surely be a matter of grave importance. Master Xingqiu, if I may be so bold, do you happen to know if there are any texts on the subject of the Stove God among this collection? Since I personally selected which volumes to store here, I do have some recollection of their contents. If my memory betrays me not, there is one volume among them called Demystifying the Legends of Liwei, which mentions the Stove God. Might I take a look? 
Certainly. If it pleases my lady, I shall lead the way. Sheng, I will take care of things here. You're free to go about your own business. They're back! So did you find it? Yes, Master Xingqiu has quite an exceptional memory. Demystifying the legends of Liyue does indeed mention the Stove God. However, it says the following. <clears throat> the body of the dragon wielded a tail that could eclipse the sun, and claws to command fire and teach the ways of wisdom. Receiving the gift bequeathed unto them, humankind cooked food with fire, and thus did they prosper. The body of a dragon? The stories about Rex Lapis say the same thing. That much is true, but this is the only passage in the whole book. If we want to find out more, we'll have to continue our investigation. There's nothing further to discover here. It seems we'll have to look at other options. I come from a long lineage of exorcists, and our family too has amassed a number of ancient texts. Now that you mention the stove god, I seem to recall reading somewhere that this god once appeared at the Guayli Assembly. Of course, I can't say if it's true or not. Books are penned by people. All they can do is show what the author was thinking. Everyone's mind is different, so every book on a given topic will give a different account. I apologize that we could not help in a more substantial capacity. Your help thus far is quite ample. Lila is a vast and rich land. All things that existed here in the past have left their trace. So long as we do not abandon our search, it is sure to bear fruit eventually. Thank you all. We will continue our investigation elsewhere. Oh, hold up! I had a question too. Xinchu, Chongyun, could you tell me what kind of food you like? Food? Oh no. Y you're not going to take <laughs> part in the masterful chefs, are you? <laughs> Xiangling, don't you cook for these two, like, a lot? You should know their tastes by now. Uh, yeah, I totally am. What's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Xiangling, this is a major event. I beg you. Please don't cook anything strange for this competition. What do you mean strange? <laughs> <laughs> Mushroom slime stew, to give one example. Okay, fair enough. That dish isn't my most popular. But that's why I'm doing all this research, so I can create some really special dishes to win everyone over. Well, in that case, I like cold food. That's because you can't handle hot and spicy, right? <laughs> yes. You're absolutely right. My tastes are on the mild side. I prefer gentle dishes with minimal seasoning. Soups and stews, vegetables and broth, seafood or freshwater fish, either boiled or steamed. These kinds of dishes I am most partial to. No surprises from the Guguagi. <laughs> okay, another mild child. Got it. These are just personal preferences, and everyone's are quite different. Are you sure this eclectic mix of opinions will be of any use? Of course! You're my customers, and putting a smile on customers' faces is my calling as a chef. Though Xiangling's market research blade stabs often into the dark, her heart never strays from the noble path. <laughs> if anyone can win the hearts and minds with their cooking, it's gotta be someone like Xiangling. She's got pure intentions and really cares about the customers. No, where's all this praise coming from? Knock it off, guys. You're embarrassing me. It's true, though. Uh, sorry for holding you all up. That's all I needed to know. Shall we carry on with the investigation now? Over to you, Kuching. Where to next? Hmm. So we've learned the stove god allegedly made an appearance at the Guayli Assembly. But today that place is largely a wasteland with few traces of human activity. Longshu Wen is close by, so let's stop off there on the way over and see what we can find out. Forgive us, for this is where we must part ways. May so your we're journey going to see be a Shao smooth next. one. Yes, best of luck. If you run into any difficulties, come and find us. We'll be only too glad to help. Thanks, everyone. Let's go! Next stop, Longshu Inn! Smiley on show. Down. 
down we go. Traveler, who are all these people? Friends of ours, allow Paimon to introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching. Kuching? Uh, of the Qixing? She's the, um, the, um... Hi. <laughs> no need to be so nervous, Yan Xiao. It's not that, it's... I mean, I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy must be a really great chef. <coughs> so, is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. Oh, okay. I see. Legends claim that the stove god once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wang Xuan is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the stove god? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. You know, if we just asked Xiao about this... I'm pretty sure he'd be able to just say yes or no to is the stove god Rex Lapis. If you are happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up or something? <laughs> what? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? A certain person comes to mind. Yeah, a guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good looking fella, not too tall. <laughs> Don't you think he can hear you? <laughs> oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know who I mean. <laughs> Just calling him a manlet right here in front of everyone. The boss told me to take everyone. care of him, but this guy, let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking, could you teach me how to make it too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. Oh, so this is for two! You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. Sure, I can help. All right then, wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking! <laughs> I'm on. Sorry for the trouble, traveler. Don't mention it. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. While Kuching's reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiangling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay. Shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. That should do it. Oh, do I not even need to make one because I already have some in my inventory? All right, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. <laughs> you got all the okay, things then. done, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching, Xiangling, we're back! You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the stove god, and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> Sixty miles to the northwest is the Guili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the stove god descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children, as does a star when it descends into the world. 
So the stove god went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. Huh. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm. Does that mean there was more than one stove god? Taking the text at face value, that is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the stove god really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? <laughs> now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So, we've got two leads, but they contradict each other. How do we know which one to believe? Y'all, let's just go ask Xiao. He should know. He's like a thousand something years old or something. I don't know. By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. Thank you for this text, Yan Xiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the traveler. Listen. You've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So, I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. And I like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. Kuching, can you spare the time? It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. Are we not gonna see Shell? Is that what's going on here? You think you own the place? <laughs> I'll sit here with Goba. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Here we are. That's everything you ordered. <laughs> oh, it all smells amazing. I think I've met my fellow finalist. <laughs> mm, it smells beautiful. Strange. I never would have guessed that such a gifted chef worked here. The Sen isn't particularly known for its food. Everyone likes a good meal, whether they're staying the night or just stopping by for a bite. We call it an inn, but the fact is it's much more than that. We have to cater to all aspects of daily life to make this a true home away from home. <sighs> Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I should get back to work now. Yan Xiao, are you taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs? Uh, huh? You too? Yep, I've signed up already, and I've got my eyes on the prize. <laughs> Your cooking's delicious, Yan Xiao. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the final. Huh, interesting. All right, <laughs> I'll see you there. What was that? Some kind of power move? <laughs> no, it seemed more sportsmanlike than that. Yep, yeah. he's a really talented chef. His food was excellent, and it showed he has a level-headed personality. That's the kind of chef that could be a match for me. I haven't had any competitive cooking experience since my cook-off with Brooke in Springvale. When the heat is on, you'll rise to the challenge. <laughs> You're too kind. <laughs> Goba, what are you doing? What is Goba doing? Uh, no. Uh, Goba's eating the... Those were kuchings! How could you steal them while she wasn't looking? Goba! Oh, my golden shrimp balls. Huh? You ate every last one? Oh, Goba, we've been through this. 
When we're with friends, you gotta be on your best behavior, okay? I'm so sorry, Kuching. I promise I'll make it up to you. What's the big deal? We can just get another plate. After all, it's Yun Xiao's treat today. It's not the same, though. The moment's gone. Sure, you can eat something else, but you can never go back and change the feeling of despair as your food is snatched away from right under your nose. The dining experience is a trinity of emotion, food, and atmosphere, and you've got to have all three to make it work. <sighs> I have to say, now that you mention it, that is a very accurate appraisal of the situation. I'm gonna make it up to you, Kaching. Is there anything you want to eat? Anything at all. Whatever it is, I'll make it for you. Hmm. I don't have high hopes for this. But equally, I don't want her feeling guilty. <sighs> okay. I'll let her do this for me. If you insist, there is one dish that perhaps you could try making for me. It's an old recipe from my grandfather's notes. No problem. May I see it? I'll get it to you when we're back in Liyue Harbor. Traveler, have you finished eating? Yep. Before we do anything else, let's head back to Liyue Harbor. I need to fetch something. So we're not gonna see Xiao. I guess he would make this too easy. <laughs> I need to go home to fetch my grandfather's notes. Let's meet at Wanmin Restaurant later. Go get everything ready. Traveler, what about you? Are you gonna do your own thing for a while, or do you want to come in and have a seat? I uh, actually have something to discuss with him. You go ahead. We'll join you later. Okay, gotcha. Traveler, come here for a moment. I need your advice on something. What do I need to do to get along with Xiongling? Huh? Seriously? That's what's stretching you out? What's so strange about it? Why are you looking at me like that? You're super smart, and you're always so sure of yourself. Paimon thought you'd never need advice from anyone about anything. Well, that's just ridiculous. Xiongling's always so warm and friendly with me. This time especially. And now she's desperate to do me a favor. So, is that supposed to mean... We're friends already? I don't see why not. I'm just not used to dealing with people who are so warm right from the get-go. How exactly am I supposed to respond to that? You seem to be getting along fine already. Uh, oh. Um, okay. <clears throat> Noted. Thank you, Traveler. I'll see you again shortly. Huh. What's making Kuching so self-conscious? Paimon thought nobody would be able to get under her skin. I'd like to hear what Shang Ling thinks. <laughs> One Min Restaurant. Hi, Su Hey, we're here! Hey, <laughs> grab a seat. I'm just running through my ingredients to see what I'm missing. Shengling, can I ask you a question? Oh, we're gonna do this now? Might as well. What is it? Paimon can explain. <laughs> <laughs> this is your idea! Why you gotta dump it on Paimon? <sighs> okay, so back at Longchu Inn, we noticed you and Kuching were getting along pretty well. So you really like hanging out with her, huh? <laughs> yep. Kuching's good-natured and easy to be around. The kind of person everyone wants to know, right? You're a braver person than Paimon. The first time we met Kuching, Paimon found her pretty intimidating. Oh yeah, I vaguely remember the first time we met her. She does have a formidable presence. Do you think so? 
I remember thinking straight away that she was really easy to get along with. Didn't you see her sneaking treats to Goba back at Wang Shuin? <coughs> yeah, she's great. We know that now. We're just talking about first impressions. First impressions? Oh, okay. Hmm. <clears throat> hey, have you guys eaten grilled shellfish before? They can be hard to crack at first, but they taste amazing that way. We've eaten shellfish before, but I don't think we've ever tried eating them grilled. Oh, you're missing out. I'll grill some for you another time. But anyway, Kuching's like a shellfish. Maybe a little closed off at first, but once you get to know her, she's got a soft and squishy side too. Not to mention that even after her favorite food was stolen away, she was still happy looking after Globa. I'm really grateful for that. You make a good point. You know, Shen Ling's intuition for people seems really spot on. Is that why she took a liking to Kuching so quickly? I think so. Alright, let's see. We're okay for carrots and crab, and we still got some ham and mushrooms. Hmm, I wonder what Kuching's recipe is gonna be. Huh? What was that noise? Uh. What's going on? What the? That bird is huge! Ah, it's the ladybird! Excuse me, one shall not be addressed in such a manner. Hi, Cloud Retainer! One shall be known as Adeptus. Whose name, should you care to mention it, is Cloud Retainer. Cloud Retainer? That does sound like an Adeptus name. Well spoken. One shall let this young lady's enlightened words atone for the ignorant ones of her friend. Hi, Cloud Retainer. It's been a while. A while it has indeed been, Traveler. Does one surmise correctly that you hastened hither to partake in the Moon Chase Festival? You could put it that way, yeah. Ah, so even the illustrious Traveler has been summoned to attend the Moon Chase Festival. As expected, this year's theme stands proud against the test of public scrutiny. The theme? You mean Feast of the Bounteous Land? The very same. Moon Chase Festival falls during the season when many cooking ingredients are ripe. Hence, it is a fitting time to enjoy the finest of foods. One notice the relative pomp and ceremony with which this year's affairs are being conducted, and could not abide to stand idly by. Let it be known that one's culinary proficiency and ingenuity is uncontested in all the world. Thus does one now appear in this realm, that those who inhabit it might witness one's latest creation, a supreme cuisine machine. Uh, a supreme cuisine what? What's a supreme cuisine machine? A new invention. Patience. One's purpose here today is to meet and to greet. Nothing further. All shall be revealed before your very eyes when the time arrives. Traveler, you are one who has witnessed much of the culinary world. When the day comes, one would be most pleased to see you in attendance, offering your most vociferous ovations. So we're officially invited? Hmm. That which is implicitly understood needs not be made explicit, let alone official. Bold of you to assume I can pick up implications. <laughs> I shall say no more and dwell here no longer. Await my word. Be there or beware. This bird always disappears just as quickly as she shows up. Oh, wait, not bird, Adeptus. Hey, wait! Isn't she technically an illuminated bird, though? Yeah. She seems like someone very prestigious and very talented at cooking. She definitely, definitely loves her food. What are you all huddled together over here for? The Adeptus left already. Yay! Kuching's back! Sorry I kept you waiting, Xiangling. This is the recipe from my grandfather's notes. They're not in the best condition, so rather than bring them out of the house, I just transcribed the recipe. Unfortunately, the texts my grandfather worked with were very old. Usually faded, damaged, or both. Some parts are missing from this recipe, too. Uh, do you think you'll still be able to work with it? Oh, okay! 
Okay, let me take a look. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Give me some time. I need to look into it. Sorry for the trouble. Oh, uh, you're all here? Can you? That voice sounds familiar. Yep, can you? Sorry to interrupt your conversation. I was in the area buying a few things, and I heard the disturbance, so I felt compelled to come take a look. You mean Cloud Retainer? I saw her too. She just suddenly showed up right in the middle of the street. <laughs> Whatever adeptal power that was, she certainly knows how to make an entrance. Lady Kuching, you saw her too? <sighs> Do you, uh, have a moment? I need to discuss something with you. Oh, God. What is it, Ganyu? Has something urgent come up while I've been out? No, it's nothing work-related. I wanted to ask about, um, something personal. Is that okay? A personal matter? Involving me? Surely I haven't done anything improper recently, have I? Please, Lady Kuching? This is really important to me. Oh, uh, okay. I noticed Cloud Retainer was here for quite a while. Did she <laughs> say anything about... Mm, me? When I was young? No, no baby stories. Uh, about your childhood? No, <laughs> This time. What? Really? <sighs> Thank goodness. I was getting really worried. Once she gets talking to people, she tends to go off on all sorts of tangents. So I was worried she might have bored you with some stories about me. <sighs> Your name didn't even come up, so you have nothing to worry about. Kuching, <laughs> how are you not asking a bunch of questions right now? There's obviously some juicy <laughs> gossip here. Aren't you curious to find out what it is? Ah, uh, please, no. Don't do that to me. <laughs> of course not. Whatever it is, I'm not curious and I'm not going to ask. I am. If Ganyu has a secret and she wishes to keep it that way, nobody should make it their business to try and get it out of her. That's just basic decency, is it not? True. Uh, yes, ma'am. Fine, and I'll never bring it up again. Kuching, I... Thank you. You're so kind and considerate. I've always seen that in you. What's that got to do with... <sighs> Honestly... Go on, you should be getting back now. Oh my, you're right, I should. Okay, everyone, please excuse me. I should get back to work now. Take good care of Kuching for me. Hey, what are you trying to say? Ah, <laughs> uh, don't worry, Ganyu, we will! <laughs> Thanks. Hope to see you again soon. At the end there, she sounded like your big sister. Just ignore her. Hey everyone! I just had an idea! It only occurred to me when that Adeptus showed up. Do you think the Stove God could be an Adeptus too? Ooh! Could be! I don't want to assert either way. But it seems highly likely. In that case, we should go ask the Adepti about it! I think my master might be able to help. Master? You mean, your teacher is an Adeptus? Uh-huh. She's over at Eugene Terrace. Come on, I'll introduce you. See Madam Thing. That's the only explanation I can think of. <laughs> Genshin Impact is a functional game. So functional.
this, that's kind of ridiculous. Madam Fang. Huh? Ah, there she is. Hello, Shugling. Hi, Madam Ping. Uh, uh, Madam Ping is Shugling's master? I did not expect that. M master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hi, Madam Ping. Hello. <laughs> master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the stove god? Of course I know the stove guard. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the stove guard. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The great stone surfaces. <laughs> And so, you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the stove guard of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times, giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moon Chase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moon Chase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moon Chase Festival. Rex Lapis. <laughs> <laughs> that friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. Is this about Guizhong, or is this a new old friend of his? I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moon Chase Festival. In the hands of Rex Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Kuching. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. 
you know, it'll be hilarious if we go to talk to Zhongli at some point during this quest. Thank you. Lady Kuchi. Huh? Lady Kuchi, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes. Hmm. Kaching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Yep. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Yes, please tell me. Oh, oh, hi, my guys. Stove God is the friend, right? Yes, precisely. There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the old friend are indeed one and the same. But I want to know if it's one of his old friends that we've heard of before. The stove god was a good friend of mine, too. <sighs> what a pity it is that the god is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. I guess not. How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the stove god passed. But gods cannot be fully destroyed, and we made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the stove god would then return, albeit in a new form. Really? Master, you must miss the stove god a lot, right? From the way you talk about it all, it sounds like you're the best of friends. Crack theory. Shunling is the stove god's reincarnation. <laughs> yes. Thinking back on it all, there are many fond memories. I'm pleasantly surprised to find the Kuching is investigating this. She is a tenacious child, and anything she sets her mind to, she will diligently pursue. It warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. Kuching's yeah. grandfather once researched the stove god, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. Ah, that makes sense. Are you Kuching's grandpa? Of course, I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold. Both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Lear as my own little potted plant. I watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain ever green and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the stove god, and within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on. Alright, so we're going to check out the stone. Might as well grab these while I'm here. Oh, I guess there are here and there. And this area is more decorated than usual. You're all here. I was just about to send someone to fetch you. Kuching, has the stone undergone any changes? A crack has appeared in one corner, but we still can't tell what's inside. What happened? Did someone tip it while no one else was looking? More likely a natural occurrence. Our weapons have had no effect on it. 
How would a natural occurrence crack it open? This is because the stove god draws power from the actions of the masses. The heat of a busy kitchen. The joy of a reunion. <laughs> Keep up the good work, and the truth will rise to the surface soon enough. All the books say the stove god is the deity of food. So is the stone opening up because everyone's cooking for the festival? Hmm. Statues draw power from their people. So, if the stove god has dominion over cooking, could it be that the passion people put into their cooking gives power to the stove god? Ningguang and I chose Feast of the Bounteous Land as this year's theme, and now every chef signed up for the competition is busy preparing. Paimon's theory is not an unreasonable one. Plus, high oh. other families have reunion feasts around this time. With everyone back home, the whole city's bustling with people, and that adds a lot to the festive atmosphere. So if the stone cracked because Leah has started getting festive, that must mean that when the festive fever peaks, it'll bust right open, right? That's gotta be it, right, Master? <laughs> well, we'll have to see then, won't we? Okay, the fact that cooking is involved gives us a perfect opportunity. The selections phase of Masterful Chefs will be held indoors and seen by only a few people. But the finals will be held outside in public. Everyone who wants to will be able to come and watch it. The atmosphere will be incredibly lively, no question. And when the finals end, boom! We'll get to see who the stove god really is, right? It's definitely a possibility. Well, I've already signed up, so I should be able to help. Yes. For a chef as accomplished as yourself, getting to the finals should be a breeze. All this talk of cooking competitions is making Paimon hungry! Oh, Paimon can't wait! It'd be great if Paimon could take a nap and then wake up when it's the finals! <laughs> Teleport waypoint unlocked? Where? Alright, so... Okay, new recipe. one first, I suppose. Yeah. And I wish there were, like, Regional variants. Please the enjoy the festivities. Outfits. Happy Moon Chase. Are there actually? I don't know. I can't tell if this is like the regular Adventurers Guild outfit or like a slightly Leoified one. <laughs> hmm. I need to place another batch of treasure chests, don't I? Oh ho ho! Oh, is it this again? Is it the... Well, no, there's no screen here. Ah. Did I hear someone mention treasure chest? <laughs> eh? Oh, it's... It's you, Traveler. Are you here to take part in the Moon Chase Festival as well? You could say that. Then you've come at the right time. The Adventurers Guild is currently organizing an event to celebrate the festival. Would you like to know more? What activities are we talking about here? During the Moon Chase Festival, the guild has placed Moon Chase charms in various places. Those who find these charms can bring them back to us in exchange for various rewards. We've also dispatched a group 
of adventurers to place a large batch of special treasure chests out in the wild. These special chests will come filled with all manner of goodies, which we prepared just for this occasion. Other than those two activities, we've also got some tough challenges lined up for elite adventurers. As for the details, it's... Well, it involves invading a series of monster camps. And what does that have to do with the festival? <laughs> I mean, uh, you don't have to put it like that. There's prizes to be had for beating those monsters. That's not all that different from normal commissions, come on. Please just help us out. Most of our adventurers have left to go enjoy the festival, and many of our commissions are just sitting there with no one to take them up. Just lend us a hand with your skills. It'll be a breeze, won't it? Oh, fine. Uh, of course, you'll be compensated fairly, Traveler. Don't worry. I'll be here through the, throughout the Moon Chase Festival. If you have any questions, just ask me directly. We're counting on you, Traveler. Well then, enjoy the festival. Ah, so is that the... Please enjoy the festivities! Happy Moon Chase! Ah, so that opened up whatever these are. To quickly take down some notes. Now, let's go talk to the cloud retainer. Let's see what Cloud Retainer has to say. Crap. That's not what I meant to do, but okay. <laughs> ah, she's up there. Wait, huh? Oh, are those the tokens? I see, I see. Cloud Retainer. Hmm. Perhaps this path is best. Ah, Traveler. Fine timing. Only recently has one finished setting this device up. So, what's it do? Hmm. How hasty of you. Be at ease and let one explain it to you. Much lore did one read in the construction of this cuisine-making machine. Know that there are a few key points in the art of 
making food. The first of these is finding ingredients, which are of utmost importance in cooking. Many long years have countless chefs labored and wandered in search of all manner of ingredients. One's device aims to solve this issue first of all. Upon activation, it will automatically search for suitable ingredients nearby and will mark their scent out, all the better for chefs to track them to their source. Can't it go grab those ingredients by itself? Ahem. <clears throat> this early days, yet would one call this stage of work, and this issue of how a stove may trek across treacherous mountain roads by itself has yet to be resolved. Now then, the second matter is the cooking itself. One has placed countless intricate components in this in device's interior, such that the mere act of placing ingredients within will see them automatically processed. How does it know how to do that? Well, naturally, it references the corresponding reference recipe in determining how the ingredients are to be processed. Its inner workings are difficult to explain in a short time. You only need to know that resolving this matter took quite some work. Much thought has this one also bent to an affair most troubling for chefs, the cleaning of one's cooking utensils. Quite a spoilage of a lovely scene of feasting it would be to have to clean up leftovers in the pot otherwise, no? Is this for sale? <laughs> but one doubts you could afford this wondrous tool. Moreover, it will only work under one's adeptal power at the moment. Purchasing it shall profit you nothing. All right, we have spoken idly long enough. Even as one was constructing this machine, one was also studying recipes. Recipes, too, therefore, has one developed alongside, such that this supreme cuisine machine may face suitable trials. One invited you here to lend a little aid in gathering ingredients and follow said recipes to make some dishes. The first of these one names the Oncindium Tofu. This dish requires tofu to be diced into tiny threads. A fair trial for this machine's knife work. As to what the ingredients are, one shall require tofu, ham, bamboo shoots, and fowl. One has already asked Ganyu to prepare these ingredients, and they should be... What? Where have the bamboo shoots gone? Most surely did one place them here. Did some villains take advantage of one in one's engrossed state to steal them away? <laughs> no matter. This is a good opportunity to show you the ingredient-finding faculties of one's supreme cuisine machine. I mean, I have bamboo shoots on hand. Supreme Cuisine Machine. Activate. Traveler, the machine has been activated. Follow the tracks it has created and reclaim one's bamboo shoots. I have, I have bamboo shoots on hand, but okay. Elemental sight doesn't help me. Oh, oh, okay, no, it's that way. I was going the right way the first time. And 
there's lots of these things all over the place, huh? Apparently they're not just in Liyue, so I was looking at the battle pass stuff. And it looks like they're also in Mondstadt and even Dragon's Vine. Gotta go through all this. But I, I had bamboo shoots in my inventory already. <laughs> What's wrong with the ones I already had, Cloud Retainer? Are they not fresh enough for you? I know where to pick more fresh ones. This is this is where I started. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, now this way. This way. This way. Shit, this is timed. Stop moving!
didn't work. There we go. Oh wow, there's a lot of these things over here. The bots are back once again, I see. See, Saribot is doing its job. Amber, stop falling. There's the thing that's here. Oh. I'm blind. And then I saw there was one up there. Back over to Cloud Trotiner. With her ingredients.
just gonna teleport over here and glide. Hello again, Cloud Retainer. Have the bamboo shoots been reclaimed? God. Good, good. These are the bamboo shoots that Ganyu prepared for oneself. The ingredients have all been prepared. Let us make ready to cook. Then the rest can be left to this machine. However, Traveler, the heat control is yours to tend to. Can't this machine do that by itself? Well, one has tried several times to use an internal flame in an attempt to achieve autonomous heat control. But the flame on the Supreme Cuisine Machine's stove is far from ordinary. One must use one's own adeptal flame to operate it. Adeptal flames of such power would warp the shape of the internal components if fed directly into the machine's interior. Sacrificing the larger machine for some small gain is thus unwise. The best solution at present is to apply the heat er, the adeptal flames externally. As such, one requires a helper to control the heat of said flames. The all-important flames shall be yours to command, Traveler. When you are ready, inform me- inform one at once. I uh, guess I'm ready. Then let us begin. Supreme Cuisine Machine, activate. Switch Diona into my team. Actually, maybe not Diona. Maybe Barbara. We can do this. <laughs> yeah, let's try that again. Yeah, I'm standing on the thing. These are cool. 
quite picky, it seems. Yeah, I'm... Uh... seconds left. Alright. Cool. Third time's the charm. How is it? Is the Uncindium pudding complete? You called it tofu before. Yeah, it is tofu. Tofu and pudding aren't the same thing. Very good. Verily do the capabilities of this machine exceed the norm. The fine control exercised in processing this tofu. Indeed, one has outdone oneself. This is thanks to your aid as well, traveler. Allow one to bestow a copy of the incendium tofu recipe upon you. You may attempt to make it again, should time allow. Further adjustments must one make to this machine's faculties. One might still need your help. One trusts that you will not decline, yes? Alright, what kind of recipe is that? I wonder, I wonder. All right, let's switch Barbara back out. I'll watch your back. And go get this. Let's see what this is all about. Huh. Offer delicacy. What? Huh? Do I not? Oh, I don't have. Okay, so I need to make food. During the challenge room. So, offering food gives you buffs and rewards. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a place to cook right over here. I need 
to make mora meat, crystal shrimp, and grilled tiger fish. Alright, grilled tiger fish. Mora meat. So was that not the one I was missing? Crystal shrimp. Mora meat. What? Oh, not delicious Mora meat. That's the problem. Okay. Oh, it's that island. Alright. Let's go fight some hilly churls, I suppose. Stop over here and get these artifacts. And also ingredients. Thought something else came up. I guess not. It's raining. Helpful. Give me those electro charges. No, it's not raining anymore. Leave no animal test sixty three oh eight. Get him. Okay, I need to move these guys up. It's like this.
Crystal gems. Oh. Now it's raining again. the next If you're scared of lightning, hide now. Stand clear. Animal hypostasis emulation. Weather. No escape. So what's the last enemy? Oh. Just a random pyro slime. Gems. Huh? Are, th are these? I, I guess they are. Okay, I got confused for a sec. So it looked kind of like they were leading me in the wrong direction. Yeah, an agent? What are you doing here, sir? Yes. 
so soon. Enhanced animal module 75. <laughs> Leave it all to me. So annoying. You're open. Yeah, razor's getting some good things. Leave no stone unt absorption test. I guess not a ton, actually, because I'm only getting 10 each time, but... I mean, hey! Primo gems! Hard to complain about that. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Leave it all to me!
my god, I hate those things. Bet you can't keep up with me. So I want to see if I'm correctly interpreting. Yeah, okay. That one's in Mondstadt, and that one's in Dragon's Vine. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. here, Absorption test! This next one should be the last one for now. Oh god. Okay, they got rid of the ruin cards for this. It's just Oh Jesus Christ, never mind. Okay. That's terrifying. One ruin guard? 
on its own, that'd be one thing, but I I don't want to fight multiple ruin guards at once. Fighting them alongside other enemies is also incredibly difficult. Bet you can't keep up with me. Go, go. Leave it all to me. I taste blood. Yeah, I am not one of those people who can do the four room guard challenge. Despite demanding Amber. Stand clear. I mean, obviously, I did it at least once, but Steady as it was a struggle. Oh god, there's more. I'll catch up. Successfully take down one. Yep. Then I know I can just get rid of the other one with Amber, no problem. <sighs> Told you I'd win. a hassle. <sighs> That's more like it.
please head to the next region, but it's not unlocked yet. Boo. Oh, refinement material for a weapon. that we apparently get at some point. Huh. <laughs> Alright. Now I think let's see if we can't find some more of those things. Was that? Sorry, there was just a sound. Nothing seems amiss in my room, so I think whatever it was, it was nothing. <laughs> ah! Crap! No! That's not what I meant to do! Something popped up. Where was it? Ah, it's right here. You ah! got me. Uh... Oh no, Amber, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Alright, and then there's one over here. There's a chest here. Oh, really? Good chess. Oh. Oh. Opening a okay. chest is like a unwrapping a gift. There's another one over there too. And something's aggroed on me, but I'm going to ignore it. Ah! Oh. Crap. Huh. Leave me alone, please. Chest is like a unwrapping a gift. Ah, crap.
just the slimes, okay. These things useful? Oh hey, there's another one. Ah, screw you, Geo Bishop. <laughs> Smell of treasure. Strange. Alright, can I see anything else interesting? that oh there's a chest there's two chests there's three chests many chests much loot These things useful? Ah! This one is guarded. What's it guarded by? Ah! You? Steady as stone. Why are the Fatui guarding chests put out by the Adventurer's Guild? a joke. <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's a lot of these. Oh, come on. Stand clear. upon lab supplies as often. Appearing out of thin air? This needs research.
another fish weapon. Wait, is this? Yes, this is the fish claymore. <laughs> Elemental burst damage by 12%. <laughs> ah. I wonder who this would be good for. I don't know. I don't know. I've seen people talk about putting it on D-Luke, but I think that's just a joke because we all love to clown on D Luke and frankly why wouldn't you clown on D Luke oh come on Animal test 6308. At least these guys are like low level. Opening a chest is like unwrapping a gift. So it's not like I struggle fighting them. It's just annoying. Huh. Bet you can't keep up with me. Go up to this one first and see if I can. <laughs> Glide over to the other one from there. Opening a chest is like unwrapping a gift. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, just barely too low. one of these chests, I suppose. anymore not from here but I kind of wonder will the Leo a treasure compass point me Jean will be upset them? if she catches us lazing around like this I, mean, I assume it would. Okay, no, they don't point me towards them. Oh, there's fishing here. Let's take a moment to fish. You've got it! You got it! No, it wasn't, Paimon. <laughs> so close, so close! Whoa, nice catch! <laughs> Victory is almost ours! Tough 
Bait you like. Come on. Come on. There we go. Steady now. It's the final stretch. Cool. Nice. And I'm pretty sure that last one is ornamental and I don't care that much about those, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Hyperstasis emulation! No escape! Leaving so soon! Uh. As a dutiful maid would. Seriously, why are there Fatui agents guarding chests that can't run the attention skill out? I do not understand. is like unwrapping a gift. Man, these chests are seriously all over the place. There's one over by Ajdaha? Or not a chest, but the other thing. It wasn't there when I was there earlier. Wow, these will come in handy. Oh no, wait, I guess I just didn't notice it. Maybe. Or maybe it really wasn't there. Who knows? Chest is like a unwrapping a gift. All right, how far along am I now? Fifty six percent. Wow, I feel like running. 
kind of just like, how much more is there? I've already picked up so much. And I mean, I'm not complaining. Bring on the loot. A sissin mage? Why are the Fatui guarding these? I don't... Is the implication supposed to be that they're trying to steal the festival stuff? Or should I be reading deeper into this? <laughs> Empty chest. Good for storage. <laughs> I'll race you there. Bet you can't keep up with me. Let it rain. Materials. These things useful? This way yeah. suddenly? Where did they come from? I was just over here. So there's one. Oh, jeez. Okay. I think what I'm going to do here is teleport up to Mount Hulao and glide over. One. Here's one over here. 
here. Here's one. And then there's one here. And one here. Alright, now what can I see from much with this tree in the way. <laughs> ah. Here's a chest. Smell of treasure. Strange. Hmm. I'm gonna keep going down this way, I suppose. <laughs> Smell of treasure, strange. <laughs> Could there be anything in here near Ajdaha? funny though Here's a chest Just is like a unwrapping a gift. And that should be the seventy five per cent marker. Seventy six per cent. Okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. know if there'd be any here. I don't see any. So I'm gonna guess not. Bet you can't keep up with me. Back up this way.
mental sight is Giving really a test helpful. Is like a unwrapping a gift. Because stuff really blends in sometimes. Bet you can't keep up with me. Uh. Alright, here's one. Nope, leave me alone. I'm not here for you guys, I'm just here to collect. Opening a chest is like a unwrapping a gift. one in here. Another target tracked down by Outrider Amber. Leave me alone, Mr. Hilly Churl. Hey, go, go, Baron Buddy. I'm just trying to find chests. Uh! I'll race you there. Smell of treasure. Strange. <laughs> Bet you can't keep up with me. Oh, I'm blind. Opening a chest is like a unwrapping a gift. You can't keep up with me.
Can't keep up with me. No, leave me alone. <sighs> That's more like it. Else there is to find. Oh wait, there's oh, one. There. Right over there. Right as I was saying. <gasps> Told you I'd win. Get ready for the gliding champion of Mondstadt. a chest. And I really hope I don't have to go into that cave. Because I know what's in there and I don't like going in there. on me anyways okay nope uh nope 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 here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna teleport up here and fly on over just glide over the area see if there's anything I can't see from the ground like this. Still not quite a hundred percent. here? No, probably not. Oh, there's a chest. And also something in the water. And also one of these. Opening a chest is like unwrapping a gift. Lots of things in this little area here. And apparently I'm still missing stuff. Where? I have no idea. Thank <laughs> you. 
try going this way. See if I missed anything over here. I doubt it though. Considering all the time I spent in this region with Cloud Retainer. might there be stuff? I wonder, I wonder... Wait, huh? Huh? What? Where did this come from? Where is it? tree? Like, do I gotta climb? this thing. There it is. And that's still not a hundred percent. one. There is a chest. Just 
Still not a hundred percent. Okay, here's one. Another target tracked down by Outrider Amber. Okay, am I at least close? This isn't the right thing. Okay, 98%. I feel like running. I don't know how much more that necessarily entails. That last two percent. You can't keep up with me. If there's like a chest up in the tree branches somewhere. <laughs> I mean, probably not, but it's worth a look. Is that over there, the Skyfall Snail? No. Is it just, uh. Oh, it might be, actually. Is there anything else over here by the hilly churls? I'll race you there. Leave it all to me. Ah, oh, shit, there might be. Okay, no, there's not anything in here. really set all that grass on fire for nothing, dude. Mm. Nothing? Really? The 
there's got to be more. What am I at? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm at 98%. To be at a hundred percent. Where's the last two percent? Someone needs assistance. Still not a hundred percent. Wonderful. Did that at least move me up to ninety nine percent? Yes. All right. So there should be one more chest? Question mark. The question is where? Where is it? Where in this huge, huge place could it possibly be? I'm going to once again teleport up here, glide down, see if I can spot anything. It's like there's got to be something here. just a barrel. Where is it? Where is it? Where's the last one? Oh my god, 
This is gonna drive me crazy until I find it. It's here, somewhere. Obviously, it has to be. Literally has to be. But where? Here, frog. Someone needs assistance. Catch up. Someone needs assistance. Uh, where is it? Oh, final chest, where are you hiding? Please reveal yourself to me. not behind this waterfall because Polio is mean and never lets you go behind waterfalls. Put cool stuff behind waterfalls even though that's like Game Design 101, first lesson they teach you in game design school. Put cool stuff behind waterfalls.
forsaken me. And why doesn't this point me towards the chest? That's so mean. You seem tired. Would you like some tea? I'll bring you some. Do you take sugar? One cube or two. I must leave no stone unturned. Oh my god, I did it. <laughs> okay, now... If I go talk to her... she give me anything for the tokens I picked up? Can I buy things from her? Is that what's going on here? Two, you guys on another date? <laughs> I support them. to do for the rest of the stream. Why do they have to give me that tray? Hmm. Uh, 
us just random stuff. God, it's loading so badly. Such a functional game, isn't it? Let's get some cooking done. Oh yeah, I got some Unagi. Ah. Okay. Recipe mastered. Nice. Sashimi platter. I was not aware that this was a recipe that I had. I didn't remember getting it. So where's this new recipe? Oh, it's a stamina food. Oh, all right. Okay, so let's make some sweet madams. Not very many. Oh god, I'm out of Matsutake. It's been so long since that's happened to me. Well, shit. Someone needs assistance. particularly want to make any of these so I'll just do this on bones iron Whenever you need me, I'll be there. Uh, let's head on over to Inazuma for reputation stuff. Because I'm still not quite maxed there. Catch up. 
Someone needs assistance. Yes, first and foremost. Clear out monsters. Clear out enemies. Tabot fried eggs. Okay. Ice doesn't bode well. Ah, I see. We got slimes. Enhanced animal module 75. Please pick up the hydro. Thank you. Wasn't too hard. Oh, it's Fatui. Because of course it's Fatui. These guys just don't leave me alone. You know, I don't know why I teleported up there. Get ready for the gliding Ew. champion of Mondstadt. Domain is closer. No more words. Blood. This isn't good. <laughs> Let's move. I help you, Mr. Geo Chanter.
Leave it all to me. Time to clean up. Fried eggs. Can I offer you a nice Tavat fried egg in this trying time? You can have my shitty ones. Sato Estate. I'll catch up. Beautiful purple glider. Alright. Oh, 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 don't mind if I do. No one escapes my sight. <laughs> to me. Absorption test. Yes. 
stone, as a good knight should. I must leave no stone unturned. Give me stuff. Yeah, no. This one, however, this one I can do. No problem. Keep up with me. Hello, foxes. I love the foxes. I'm so glad they're in the game. Once again, this rain will either help or hinder severely. Probably help. Win. Wow. Helped quite a bit. I won't let you down. You can't keep up with me. Rain is huh. definitely gonna help here. Huh. No question. I know it's not much, but you gotta remember I'm running her with a uh, three star weapon and four star cup and hat. And on a 
honestly probably kind of sub optimal sub stats on most of uh, artifacts. That's more like it. So I see that damage and I'm just Mwah. love it.